What does funk sound like? Does it sound like this? Or does it sound like this? Depending on when and where you discovered funk, the answer could go either way. If you're like me and you discovered funk through SoundCloud a few years ago, you'd probably say the first track best represents funk. But if you're like the millions of listeners who have discovered funk through TikTok, you'd probably go with the second one. Since 2020, Russian producers have been going viral on TikTok with their distorted cowbell heavy take on the funk genre. Just last year, Spotify caught on and decided to give funk its very own editorial playlist. For the funk scene, which for years had been relegated to an obscure corner of SoundCloud, this was huge. The genre finally had institutional support from one of the largest streaming services in the world. But whether Spotify knew it or not, this playlist would end up doing more harm for the scene than good. On paper, the funk playlist was a godsend. Funk producers had been asking for a dedicated editorial playlist for years, and here it was, now with over 400,000 followers. Even a single placement on a playlist of this size could completely change the trajectory of somebody's musical career. The funk playlist brings in so many streams that for many of the artists featured, it's their top playlist. So what's the catch? Well, unless you make cowbell heavy funk tracks that TikTok would love, you don't have any realistic chance of ending up on the playlist. Of the 100 tracks currently featured, 87 of them fit into a subgenre that for years has been called drift funk. As far back as 2019, this distorted cowbell heavy version of funk was being used in compilation videos of JDM cars drifting around narrow corners, earning it the title of drift funk. But of course, the average TikToker isn't aware of this subtle distinction. So when drift funk started going viral, it established the public's definition of funk. Nearly every funk tutorial thereafter was centered around the drift funk style, with some even believing that cowbells were a requirement in funk music. Amidst all of this, Spotify launched in Russia in July of 2020. Millions of Russians flocked to the platform to stream their favorite funk artists, giving a noticeable boost to funk's popularity on Spotify. Drift Funk benefited not only from this influx of Russian listeners, but also its recent meteoric rise on TikTok, giving it a competitive edge over the other styles of funk. Now, think about this from a perspective of a Spotify executive. You've never heard of funk before, but it's blowing up on TikTok and generating millions of streams on Spotify, particularly from Russian listeners. With that in mind, Spotify's next steps actually make a lot of sense. Just 10 months after launching in Russia, Spotify announces the Funk playlist in May of 2021. Knowing how many Russians have flocked to the platform for this type of music, they decide to target Russian listeners specifically, announcing the playlist via Spotify Russia. In preparation, Spotify hires someone to research the origins of the genre, attaching a short write-up to the announcement. The write-up correctly mentions some of the forefathers of funk, including 3-6 Mafia and DJ Smokey, but from here, Spotify's decisions start to make a lot less sense. It doesn't appear that the person who wrote the write-up is curating the playlist. I say this because, while DJ Smokey is mentioned in the write-up as a pioneer of the genre, he hasn't been featured on the playlist once. The same can be said of other pioneers not mentioned in the write-up, including Sudier, Purple Posse, Holy Mob, and a number of others. From the beginning, the funk playlist has almost exclusively featured drift funk, particularly drift funk tracks that have gone viral on TikTok. So, it's easy to see why the funk playlist has been fraught with controversy since its creation. Millions of people were listening to funk before Drift Funk went viral, and now they're beginning to wonder when other styles of funk will see the spotlight. Drift Funk's popularity on TikTok inevitably led to a misunderstanding of what funk is, and you can't necessarily blame anyone for that. We can't expect everyone on the internet to understand the nuance of this niche genre, but we can expect that of a Spotify playlist editor. Unfortunately, Spotify has only exacerbated the public's misunderstanding of funk by exclusively promoting drift funk and simply labeling it as funk. By reducing funk to nothing more than trendy cowbell music, Spotify's funk playlist absolutely has the potential to kill the genre. What will happen to the playlist when drift funk's virality eventually dies off? Will the playlist stop being updated entirely? We're already getting a glimpse of this, with less than half of the tracks being added in the last three months. With so much funk music on Spotify today, there's really no reason for so many tracks to stay on the playlist for that long. We care so much about this playlist because we know what it can be and it's frustrating to see it fall so short. If Drift Funk dies off and Spotify lets the playlist die with it, Funk could remain in SoundCloud's underground indefinitely. And some of us might be okay with that. 
but many of us want this scene to get the institutional support that it needs to reach the mainstream. The funny thing is, Spotify's algorithms already have a pretty good understanding of what funk is. Look no further than Spotify's Sound of Funk playlist, which is 100% algorithmically curated and includes a lot of the pioneers that I mentioned before. Even Spotify would agree that it doesn't make sense for their editorial funk playlist and their algorithmic Sound of Funk playlist to be so drastically different. Spotify, with this playlist, you have the chance to set the record straight. The chance to educate millions of listeners on the rich history that this incredibly unique genre has to offer. Drift Funk is great, and I'm a fan of many of the artists in the playlist, but even they could tell you that Drift Funk is just a tip of the iceberg. Do yourself a favor and dive beneath the surface and discover the thousands of other artists that have helped make the scene what it is today. Or you know, if you'd rather just give the playlist to someone who knows what they're talking about, I might know a guy. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you want Spotify to see this video, be sure to share it with them. This year I'm just going to focus on making shorter mini documentaries like this. So if you want to see more of that, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment what you want to see next. See you guys in the next one. Peace.